Hi, my name is Jerry, and I am a twin troller boat owner. This is a video submitted by Steve from Melbourne, Florida. In part one, he shows us his boat and things he has done to that. And in part two, he shows you a trailer that he created for his twin troller X10 from one he purchased at Harbor Freight. Hi, my name's Steve. Welcome to Brevard County, Florida, particularly Melbourne. I'm 56 years old. We moved here to Melbourne when I was seven years old, and that's also when I started my lifelong passion of bass fishing, which evolved over the years into trophy bass hunting. Uh, another thing I would like to point out that uh, no one is showing about this boat, not even the company, but of course they're aware of it, is how this bow is made uh, forward between the two pontoons. This bow really does a great job of parting water, especially when it's getting a little choppy out there, and this flared gunnel is, is just magic on this little boat. You can see how wide it is, and it goes all the way around you know, it starts narrowing out about right here, but it does a tremendous job of splashing the water out and down away from inside the boat, resulting in a much drier ride. No other small boat has this. And now we'll just move on to uh, basically how I have my boat set up. It's not too fancy. Chaz is my assistant today. She knows how to use cameras. I'm, an, I'm a dummy when it comes to cameras. First off, I changed out and upgraded to a uh, Humminbird Piranha Max 4 with down scan. It's much better than the little Lowrance that was on here to begin with. I mean, the, the picture is crisp and clear. Uh, the only thing I do not like about this depth finder is when you're going through the menus, it's, it's too small, very hard to read. But other than that, I love it for the cheap price. And you'll also notice here in the, in the bow of the boat, you see I've got a kayak paddle that breaks down into two. That's only for emergencies, even if I ever need them. Uh, it's much better than a single paddle that you're having to swing back and forth in front of you to paddle on each side. It's twice as fast as paddle. And they can also be used to clear any floating weeds or or trash out of the water that you're trying to go through. As you can see, I got a 10 pound mushroom anchor. I only use it in deeper water if I'm anchoring to still fish, mainly for shiner fishing for trophy bass. I also have a three piece fiberglass anchor pole. And I've got another use for that as well that I'll show you later in this video. Now, if, if you would, just step right here, Chaz, and show down the front of the boat here. As you can see, guys, I've got eight rods in this boat, four in each side, and they fit perfectly. They're totally out of the way. I can get to these rods. All I have to do is move one rod, and I can get to any other rod in there. Very seldom do I have a tangle. It's not any more common than on a $50,000 bass boat, everyone gets a rod tangled once in a while. Now you're probably wondering why that tackle box is sitting where it is in front of my seat and the pedals are right there. I can't stand up, can I? Well, Chaz, I guess it's time for the big reveal. So we'll see you on the next uh, Another seat. quick uh, video insert, folks. Uh, as you can see, with four rods in here, my shoe, I forgot to show you in the main video, I actually stand on this side rail. These, these rails are so deep, it doesn't even touch the rods, let alone damage them. And no rod straps needed out on the water, not even in choppy water. I don't know about spinning reels, but with eight bait casters in here, the, the rods don't even bounce because the twin troller isn't going fast enough to do wave jumping, you know what I mean? Another little mod that I did myself is this little basket here. It's it's a just a cheap steel basket I bought at Home Depot. It was white. I painted it black. And as you can see, 
I used black zip ties two for each tower upright and it's not going anywhere there's a total of eight of them I took some uh, wire nippers and cut this top rung this rung right here I cut it out in between two of them and lo and behold it fits perfectly between these uprights excuse me sweating it's really hot out here guys but I've got my Mustang inflatable uh, life preserver here my PFD this is one of my fuel tanks that uh, I learned from Jerry thanks Jerry I've got two of them one is in uh, the back of the boat over there we'll show that in a minute and this cup right here is very handy for these side trays they drain great but the these real pockets unfortunately they they don't have a drainage system but that can't be helped because of the water line it's the water line is too high but uh, this cup right here or any cup of, a, of about this size you could scoop in like three scoops you've got 90 percent of the water out of there works great I also have a uh, first aid kit a spare prop everyone using an outboard should have a spare prop and this bag here is just extra soft plastics that I use for that particular day as you can see some of the paint starting to chip off of this basket maybe I should try some clear coat over it the next time I also use these cheap safety goggles you can buy these at Harbor Freight for 99 cents because in the pre-dawn hours down here the flying insects get so bad I mean they'll get right in your eyes and one time I got one I about had to go to the emergency room and my eye got an infection those those wraparound goggles really help and they're so cheap you can buy three or four pair at a time they come in separate packages and just keep a few extras in your vehicle or in your boat and then when you have time uh, uh, when the goggles excuse me when the goggles get scratched up which they do fairly easily just throw them away and break out another pair of my boat here's here's the other fuel cell now in my day box I've got all kinds of stuff in here. I've got a gallon gas can with the old style spout. As everyone knows, those new ones are terrible. They're absolutely worthless. So find you uh, an older style spout. They work on the new gas cans. It's a perfect fit even with the existing lid on the new cans. It will not leak a drop when you're using the can. I've got uh, spare sheer drive pins for the prop. I've also got spare cotter pins in here. I've got a, a cheap little rain poncho folded tight and rolled up inside a Ziploc baggie. I've got a funnel. Guys, when you go to fill up out on the water, of course you can get any box you want. Chaz, you can shoot down in there if you like. I even have Gorilla Tape in here. I've got a bunch of tools if I needed to work on this motor, but I doubt I ever will. Guys, you're gonna want a funnel at least this big for refueling on the water, even with the nozzle, even with these two bottles. As you can see, it's almost five and three quarter inches in diameter. Don't use a smaller one because trust me, when you're out on the water, if there's a little bit of wave action, you're gonna make a mess and spill gas and that's not a good thing out on our pristine waterways also I want to show you guys another thing some of you know about these I have had this little Minn Kota battery tester since 2001 it's still like brand new guys and I've used it in every boat I've owned it works great and it's a great secondary source for checking your battery. It, it's not as high tech as, a, as a, a status per se, but it is in 25% increments. And I've come to find out that this thing is reliable and fairly accurate. Also, I want to give everyone a safety, well, not so much a safety tip, maybe it could be classified as first aid. Put this tape measure back in here. These are called wire end cutters. 
Uh, many of us in the trades call them uh, bullnose nippers. Every fisherman should have a pair of these exactly this size for freshwater fishing. I don't care if you own a boat or not. If you get a hook in your hand, and it, uh, especially a lure with treble hooks, and it's still attached to the fish, and that fish is thrashing around violently, these really save the day, more so than those scissor type wire cutters. These can cut a galvanized, the, the shank of a galvanized roofing nail like hot butter. A nail, or excuse me, a hook or any split ring, no problem at all. One handed, it, it'll just take care of it instantly. Plus, the way that's made, you can get into any tight spot in, around your hand. So the first thing you would want to do is cut the split ring to the offending hook in your hand to free you from the fish first off before you get more hooks in your hand as the fish is shaking around. Once you take care of the fish, if that hook goes completely through your hand, that in other words the barb comes out, consider yourself lucky. You take these nippers and just cut the hook. I've actually done this two times in the past two years. You just cut right behind the barb of the hook where it's coming back out of your hand or, or arm or wherever it may be. And then the, the main part of the hook, you can pull it right out. And I'm not kidding, folks. Just a couple drops of blood. It was almost painless, and I went right back to fishing like nothing ever happened. Also, you'll see in these side trays, there's still, even with eight rods, four in each side tray, there's still tons of room for all kinds of gadgets and tools. I got my Gambler digital scales on this side. On the other side, I have fish grippers and fishing pliers, basically needle nose pliers. I also have my good old dependable Rapala analog scales. These are still fairly accurate. I check them frequently, uh, five pounds, 10 pounds, 12 pounds even down to three pounds. This thing is within a couple ounces. And I've also had this since 2001. It looks a little worse for the wear, but it still works as good as it did when it was new. You will also see that I have the hog trough. These things are the bomb, guys. They really are. You just literally flop the fish in there and that bump stop. And these, these marks are high visibility. And they're also raised, so if any of that ever wears off the black ink, you just take a black Sharpie and touch it up, it's good as new. These also float now. You can get these on fishing.com, guys, today for only $19.99. That's the cheapest I've ever seen these. And this is the actual hog trough. There's some of these cost, uh, or excuse me, some versions of these in different brands cost as much as 50 bucks. I'm sorry, no way. I'd rather pay 20 bucks for this. Good people to deal with fishing online. And don't laugh, this is a large umbrella. I bought it at Home Depot for I think $8. Uh, in fast passing showers, providing there's, if I see a storm coming and there's just no lightning, many of you longtime fishermen, you know what I'm talking about. You can tell the difference in storms you know if there's no lightning it's just rain well i have found since i bought this umbrella i don't even break out my rain poncho i pop this thing open it is so large i sit in the seat and i'm basically dry except for maybe my feet and i wait till the storm passes but more importantly i wish i could use it right now while we're making this video in the summer heat when i'm making long runs with my outboard i open this up I can remove my head buff and my hat because I'm under the umbrella and man, I get the breeze, I'm in the shade, and it is a lifesaver in this 90 plus degree heat. Also, if you would, Chaz, swing over around this way. You will see... Uh, I've got an 800 gallon per hour automatic bilge pump with built-in float switch. Guys, if you're going to fish big waters in any boat, you should have 
an automatic bilge pump of some kind. Now, because the twin troller is a small boat, you don't want to get one that requires an exterior float switch. It's The float switch is going to take up space. Where are you going to put it? And in rough, choppy water, some of your items that you may have in your boat can fall over on that float switch and it won't work properly. So get one that has the built-in float switch. You uh, Notice I painted the PVC black to match all the trim on the boat. You may be wondering why I have that pipe straight out instead of one more elbow straight down. Well, if you look at most of your bass boats, their bilge pump shoots the water on purpose up and out because if you're running the boat, you can't hear when a bilge pump kicks on. But if you happen to look back and you see that stream of water, well, in a bass boat or any other boat for that matter, uh, you know that you're taking on water somehow. But in my instance, if, if I unfortunately run into some rather dangerous rough water, I want to be able to look over my shoulder and see that water shooting out of that pipe because I won't be able to hear it with the outboard going and the wind and everything else. Now, you do not have to use a switch on these, uh, like a toggle switch or a, or a rocker switch if you don't want to. That's the route I chose. You can even see on their own wiring diagrams for these pumps. You can do it with no switch at all. You just connect the uh, negative to the negative of the battery, the hot to the hot of the battery, and then this third wire, which would really be controlling the switch itself, you know, on off auxiliary or on off automatic. Simply take this wire and you want to coat the end of that wire really well with paint or uh, some kind of wax, anything that'll seal off that wire good and then tape it really well with electrical tape and don't leave it dangling down in the bottom of your boat. You want it, re you want it elevated and as you can see I just have it simply tied with a, a simple, I guess you call that a granny knot or a half hitch to the handle of the battery. Now, if you wire your pump this way with no switch, real, well, really, now that I think about it, any of them should come with an inline fuse. Here's, I decided to go with the uh, plug-in style. It's a, uh, you want to go with a 10 amp fuse on these. These are much better than the glass fuses, as you can see. You just simply pop that cap off, and this is for marine use, this little, uh, fuse device here and that pulls right in and out that's another thing I have in my day box spare fuses I've even got uh, spare fuses I can't remember for what else but I've got spare everything in here believe me there's a lot more in this day box than than you see just glancing in uh, okay uh, if you would just walk around here I'm going to show you guys we're going to move on to my motor now now uh, twin troller they're, they're under contract with Honda, you know, and I understand that. That's fine. But for me, uh, where I live here, growing up here was paradise for uh, bass fishing. We had almost limitless lakes and ponds and creeks and canals to access. But in my area here in Brevard County, that's long gone now. Everything's private property fenced in. So you need a boat these days but uh, I'm, I'm forced to fish big water here I don't have those small bodies of water everywhere like many of you have wish I did uh, but I fish the stick marsh mainly and farm 13 which is the south end of uh, the stick marsh and it's one of the best bass fisheries on earth and it, it, it has been for years and it still is that lake is over 6,500 acres, about 6,700 if you count the canal and dike system that surrounds it. And while that may not be considered a large lake, for this boat it is a large lake. And I, I would rather rely on this. This is actually a Tahatsu. It's a three and a half horse Tahatsu, 100% from the gas cap vent all the way down to the trim tab beneath the prop. It's 100% Tahatsu. The only thing different is that mercury decal. Even the paint is the same. And if you notice on these, 
they have a longer tiller handle than any any of the competition does I'm not sure about Yamaha but I know Suzuki and Honda their handles are only about this long I also uh, you can buy nicer extensions if you want but this has been working great for me it's it's a Minn Kota tiller handle extension and as you can see it extends out that far but the problem is it even says on the package not rated for any motor that can go over three miles per hour you may be wondering well, what speed got to do with it I'll tell you what torque you see that rivet right there it just can't handle it see it's already starting to have play but guys these things are only like somewhere between 20 and 25 bucks I only extended about that much and with the longer handle to begin with on the Tahatsu Mercury, I jokingly call it my Mercatsu. This is plenty long enough with just that little bit of extension. Actually, no extension at all with this just being on there. If you use one of these, even though the handle of the outboard is, is rubber, it's soft rubber, I don't know why, but when you go to tighten this handle, it feels like it's on there, but it will vibrate loose. And this is one of the smoothest motors on the market. It has rubber grommets mounted anywhere to, to decrease vibration. But what you can do is take bicycle inner tube or any other material that is similar and wrap it around the handle of the outboard and then tighten this down. And for whatever reason, it hardly ever vibrates loose that way. Also, um, you guys, some of you are going to hate me for saying this, but I, I'm just about telling the truth when I see it. Whether you know it or not, I don't know about Yamaha, but the Tahatsu and the Mercury, because Mercury is contracting to, to Tahatsu for their smaller outboards, it is the only outboard that I know of that is made in Japan. The Suzuki is made in Thailand, and the Honda is made in China even up to their five horsepower and for all I know maybe even bigger another thing about this motor it's a real outboard I'm sorry but those other outboards they are not as complete as far as outboards go as the Tahatsu or Mercury you can look up the specs yourself nowhere do you see any of those other brands now I haven't seen uh, Yamaha yet so I'm not gonna count them but uh, between Suzuki and Honda you will not hear them say zinc coated water passages that's the water passages that cools around the cylinder now of course the little 2.3 Honda is air cooled but their bigger outboards are water cooled but they still make no mention of zinc coated water passages but here's the big one the game changer this motor has a stainless steel water pump housing and let me tell you folks this thing I've owned this I've owned my twin troller and this motor and that trailer for 22 full months now and not once has it sputtered or backfired missed or popped or anything it, it just runs like a, a brand new Singer sewing machine it is so dependable it's not bad on uh, fuel economy either uh, another thing, uh, I want to get to the, uh, here's the uh, transducer, the different transducer for the uh, uh, Humminbird Piranha. This is, I just left it on there, that's from the first fish finder. I can take that off and plug those holes, but I just left it on for now, no big deal. Um, let me grab the uh, uh, a prop that's used. They're all making these composite props. And I'm telling you guys, if you buy them from Mercury, they charge you anywhere between $60 and $80. Let me get in the sun so you can see this. And, of course, this motor came with the prop on it. And it was uh, supposedly a Mercury Tahatsu product. I compared it to these aftermarket props. You can buy them on iBoats for like $8. They're less than $9. Now compare that to sixty to eighty dollars, and they're they're the same prop. I've compared everything. I can't find the difference. Now the reason you want to have at least one spare prop, if not two, for that price, 
Do you see all that boogered up mess right there? When you shear a drive pin from striking a stump or a rock or whatever, uh, it doesn't happen every time, but it happens fairly often. In this case, on this prop, and I've done it twice on two different props, the pin broke on this side of the drive shaft, but when I pulled the prop off, that side of the pin that was broken somehow got in this side and it reminded me of a bullet slug lodged in a wooden stud. And what the problem that creates is you can use this prop. Well, I, uh, I don't know how I damaged this, so don't pay any attention to that. I'm not using this prop at all. I just keep it to, to warn people. Um, if you was to reuse this prop, let's just say that's still in good shape. What's going to happen you're going to have even more slop and play in there. It's going to slap around, and it'll probably break your new drive pin almost instantly. So, guys, buy a couple spare props. I forgot to mention about the Tahatsu and Mercury that I lovingly call my Mercatsu. These outboards have the biggest displacement in the industry for their size, both 2.5 horse and 3.5 horse. That means a bigger piston. They have much more torque and low end punch. When this motor is at half throttle, it's doing as much or more than any of the other motors of the same size are doing in wide open throttle. That's important when you're making long runs and I truly believe it'll cause the, the uh, outboard to last longer because it's less of a load Cup on it. Cup holders are the bomb. The, the simple solution is you just, you have to pick any container that's a close fit. If you can find those older style koozies that have the closed cell foam that's about a quarter inch thick, that would even be better. But those, I can't find them anywhere these days. They only have these thin koozies. So you can, there's like literally probably hundreds of these various tumblers on the market. Or uh, even if, if you drink soda or any can that's similar to the size of a 12 ounce can of soda or larger uh, 16 ounce whatever but any any of these uh, containers that are roughly the size of a soda can all you have to do you can only see two of these koozies but there's actually three on there and it fits uh, you see that believe me this in the choppiest water I have never ever lost my drink I might accidentally kick it with my toe when I'm spinning on my seat, but that's my fault. And it, it works equally well in the rear in the rear compartment. God, I want to give you a couple other tips on an economical way for running lights for the twin troller. With no fasteners, no running wires, it's totally wireless. You can buy these, a lot of Walmart sell them and Tackle Warehouse sells them. It, you'll see them in different brands, but it's the exact same device. Uh, they're portable anchor and running lights. As you can see, now the running light portion, it's adjustable. You can, you can put this here, so you know, if you needed to mount it another way, but it works great. I put it on my fish finder up front, but be warned, if you was to mount this on a fish finder, don't over tighten it. You can actually break the plastic housing on those fish finders. I know I did it once. Uh, this one, it will mount right here, just like that. You screw it down with the thumb screw and there it goes. There's a caveat to these though. I wish the company would use a better grade of plastic. And here's why. I uh, haven't had any problems with the running light, but as you can see, I forget what batteries they take. It's, I think it's two or three triple A's. And these are LED lights, so they last a long time. Yeah, it's three triple A's. Guys, I've had these lights for two years now and they still work great and these are the same batteries believe it or not and I uh, I have to take off really early on the stick marsh to make that six and a half mile run all the way to the south end it takes me about 45 minutes 
but you have to remember I have to slow down for stump fields as well. But the problem is the anchor light. It has the same screw on cap at this base right here as you see here. The only difference is the post is permanently attached to this cap. So you're actually twisting the whole light to bring that off. The problem is this plastic is so cheap, for whatever reason, with the anchor light itself, it will break. It'll just fall completely off. So when you first buy it, even if you get it in the package, if this is broken off, hey, you can return it and get another one if you want. But trust me, they'll break on their own. Use Gorilla Tape. Don't use glue. The glue can fail. You'll lose your light. Just take, take it apart and carefully tape that little cap on like you see here and then use some extra Gorilla Tape to tighten it up. You want it to where you can just take this off if you need to. And actually, you can even run your tape over the seam because you're not going to have to replace those batteries for a long time. Well, I guess maybe if you fish at night a lot. But these are only like uh, below $25. You can't beat that for portable lights. If any of you out there knows of another portable nautical light system, please let us know in the, in the comments of the video because I would like to buy that myself. But for the time being, these work for me, and I'm sure they'll work for you too. If you like my video, feel free to subscribe. Just push that button in the corner. Or give me a thumbs up. Or share it with your friends. And don't forget to leave some comments or questions on the bottom. Thanks for watching.